Peace. It's your boy, Romello Scuds, E. Russ, Outspoken 520 Boxing. Want to give a recap on today's fight, uh, today's event. Five versus five, Queensberry versus Matchroom Boxing. Queensberry promotions. By Frank Warren's team, all got W's today. Clean Sweep, 10-0. And Eddie Hearns, Matchroom Boxing, all his fighters got L's today. Um, this event was full of excitement, shock, and end of an era. All in one. I'm going to break down all fights that happened tonight. I'm going to start with uh, Willie Hitcherson. Versus Craig Richards. Uh, Hitchison got um, the uh, unanimous decision. I thought he dominated that fight. It was at his pace. Um, he's coming up in the light heavyweight division. Um, that was a good solid fight. But the next fight. is my fight of the year this year so far. It got to be Nick Ball. Versus Raymond Ford. Raymond Ford. Was the uh, WBA uh, featherweight champion. And I must say, that was a fight of the year. Back and forth. Determination. Um, when you got to go to the score, uh, the last round, the last two rounds, 11th, 11th and 12th, to decide who's the winner, that's when you know you enter a place of Boxing that is so special, so special. Um, I thought in that fight, Nick Barr uh, was determined. Um, he had the early rounds. It was his fight. It was his style of fighting. As Raymond Ford is slick. He's a slick fighter. He's a, a fluid fighter. You know, he got the jab. You know, he got the distance, but it didn't show today. It showed in spurts today. In the middle rounds, especially, that's when he picked up the pace. But Nick Ball was just so determined. He just went in the ring and just like, I'm not going to lose this fight. Um, he had to fight with Ray Vargas that went to a draw, I believe. Um, he didn't get that uh, title, uh, the WBC featherweight title from him. So he went to this fight like, I'm going to get this title. And he did that. Um, it took... Uh, last, the last two rounds were just, it could, it could have went either way. Um, a draw wouldn't have been good, but I had Nick Ball winning. Um, I just thought his activity, his sense of urgency, um, pressure, relentless. He was hurt in the 11th and 12th round. He was hurt. But it was like he was shaking off um, what Raymond Ford was throwing at him, shook it off, and we just kept coming he kind of had that rocky bad boy uh type of spirit just he's getting hit but he's just so determined and that's a dangerous man when you're not going down when you're not going down without a fight and you just keep coming and i gave him the win um it was much deserved to me um uh, people in my boxer community that i'm in um saying Ramy for one he had him hurt when you have someone hurt and the person don't engage, yes, that win the fight. But when you got someone hurt and they still coming, all bets are off. You know what I'm saying? So, and Nick Ball was coming. That That's my fight of the year so far, man. If you haven't seen that fight, please do. You can see the highlights. They probably have the full clip or full video, maybe next week or so. But watch that fight, man. I'm telling you, that was a a damn good fight. Damn good fight. Um, congratulations to uh, Nick Barr as he's the new WBA featherweight champion. The fight after that was uh, Hamza Shiraz versus Ammo uh, versus Ammo uh, Ammo Williams, and that fight was. A good one too. Um, Shiraz had um, knocked out uh, Ammo, Ammo Williams, um, in the seventh round, I believe. Ammo has a couple of he had a couple of moments, um, especially in the second round. We call him with that straight uh, left, I believe it was his left or the right. It was one of them, 
But he called him, he called him with that, but then Sharas was just like picking up the pace. He's pick he was picking it up and finally stopped him. But uh after that fight it was Dimitri Bivar versus Malik Zanad. Uh Malik Zanad got knocked down in the first round. But credit to Malik Zanad, uh he had he challenged uh Dimitri Bivar. I had Dimitri Bivar win in that fight. He's too skilled for him. But um it's kind of a shock that he stopped him. Um, he had to stop nobody in the last nine fights. And Dimitri Bivar just turned it up another gear. That's what skilled fighters do. It feel like they're in one gear and the other opponent and the opponent figure it out and, and on the same space as you, but then they turn it, they turn it up to another gear, and that's what Dimitri Bivar did, stopped him in the sixth round. Um well, Dimitri Bivar is ready for Arthur Better BF and Turkey LSG came in the ring and the fight is going down undisputed 175 light heavyweight uh, October 12th five days before my birthday I'm happy on that so um but the fight is going down I think Dimitri Bivar just made a statement saying I'm coming you know I can knock you out or I could just school you you know, so, but you got to watch out for Arthur Better BF. He's the most uh, lethal puncher in boxing today. Um, all his wins come from knockout. So you got to be careful. But Dimitri Bivar is ready. Now, the shocker of tonight's event was Daniel Dubois versus Fr uh, Flip Harkovich. I have Flip Harkovich winning this fight, but it was the other way around. Daniel Dubois put up a very damn good fight today, and he stopped Flip Harkovich. I did not see that coming. I didn't. Um, Daniel Dubois do got power, but I just thought his mental wasn't going to be there, and I thought Flip Harkovich um, was more fluid to him was more um, poised to him. It was more complete to him. But I was damn wrong. Daniel Dubois did his thing tonight. Congrats to him. He's the new IBF interim heavyweight champion right now. So I don't know if Alexander Usyk is going to be stripped of the IBF title because Alexander Usyk had beat Daniel Dubois. Now, you may not agree with it, uh, with the body shot uh, for that uh, fiasco, you may not you may not believe it. Whatever you may thought, Daniel Dubois won that fight. He should have been he should have been unified champion and not undisputed or whatever. But he still lost that fight. So Daniel Dubois is the new IBF interim uh, heavyweight champion. Now to the main event, Deontay Wilder. Former WBC champion, former Olympian, bronze medal, former, former, former. Title, 10 title defenses, he was on top of the world. He went against Jalene Big Bang Zhang. And I must say it's the end of an era for Deontay Wilder. I think he needs to retire. Like today. Um, he got knocked out in the fifth round. The fight started kind of boring. Um, both men was kind of timid. Uh, Zhang don't um, throw a lot of punches. He just throw that punch that would knock you on your ass. So um, both was kind of timid. And both was kind of hesitant to throw uh, the big punch. Because they was afraid of... Whoever led the big punch is going to win this fight. But in the fifth round, Deontay Wilder got caught with a right that he didn't see, and that spinned him around. He was looking for the rebels. He thought it was a, a a foul play, but it wasn't. It was a good shot. He didn't see it, and then it turned around. Big Bang Zhang hit him with another uh, right, and it was murder, uh, he wrote. And it's the end of an era for Deontay Wilder. Uh, Deontay Wilder, to me, he was better when he was reckless. <laughs> As idiotic that sounds, he was better when he was um, 
idiotic, reckless, uh, just throwing all kinds of wild, stupid punches. He was better. But since he got with Malik Scott, a fighter that he beat early in his career, that's crazy. But a fighter that you beat is training you to get better. I just don't understand it. I I never understood why he left uh, Mark Breland. I never understood that. But that's fighters. I mean, they feel like their new coaches would uh, take them a place that they all trainers couldn't. And that was wrong. Um, he won one fight <laughs> out of the past, what, three or four fights. I mean, he lost to Fury in the trilogy. He lost to Joseph Parker. And he lost tonight in a KO fashion. So, um, yeah, it's over for Deontay Wilder. I think he should go to the sunset. Good career. Um, whether the opponent's is um was good enough or was any good but you got to admit um he had t uh, 10 title defenses you can't beat that that's on the element of Joe Lewis or Larry Holmes as defending the title multiple multiple times and coming out the successor so you can't ignore that and he got a bronze um medal in the Olympics. So you can't ignore that. Now, do I think he should have been a Hall of Famer or he should be a Hall of Famer? I say yes. I, I, I say yes. If Timothy Bradley and um, Ricky Hatton can be in the Hall of Fame, why not Deontay Wilder? Um, he, he's been dominant in the most prestigious traditional division in boxing. And and, he and that's heavyweight. Everybody knows who's the heavyweight champion of the world because they on the top of the pedestal. So, yeah, you, you can't ignore that. But, again, I think he should retire. He's not going to be Tyson Fury. He's not going to be Joseph Parker. He's definitely going to be Ozana Usyk. Um, and he's not going to be Anthony Joshua. I think Anthony Joshua is better than him now. So, yeah, uh, I think he should call it quits. But tonight's event was very good, um, very solid. Um, again, it got a fight of the year in my eyes uh, with Nick Ball versus Raymond Ford. So, but that's all I got for y'all. I'm Romello Scuds. Hit that uh, bell button. Subscribe to the channel. Outspoken 520 Boxing. I'm on Facebook, IG, and YouTube. So subscribe to that channel for notifications whenever I do new content. But this is your boy, Romello Scuds. Peace and blessings. One.